Hello angels, welcome to another tutorial. Today we're going to be working on a to-do app, but this to-do app is going to have a twist with it. And we're going to be learning a lot today. We're going to be learning a lot of HTML, especially on the HTML drag and drop API. We're also going to be doing a lot of do manipulation. And so if this is what you have in mind, just join me on this journey. And bearing the twist in mind, let me just show you what this application is about. And I'm going to say, I'm going to type in here, ride a bike. If I say add, it comes here. Then if I say cut the veggie table, if I um, type enter, then you can see cut the veggie table. If I decide, so as if you've been looking, if you've been noticing so far, each time I add a new to do, this increases. Then if I drag this here, ride a bike so you see that there is an overlay over the ride a bike yeah let me add one more let me say join the band and if i decide to click on edit so we have this um if i change this to instead of band we change it to bandwagon enter and um if you can see you can see join the bandwagon i can decide to move it here and each time I move it, you can see we now have two over three completed. I can bring it back here. If I want to edit it, I can edit it. But this time I'm going to delete it. So delete. And as you can see, it has dropped to one over two completed. Yeah, so um, this is what we're going to be learning. It's something that I believe you would enjoy. It's going to be, um, uh, yeah, I'm sure we're going to enjoy this together. So um, see you as we start this. I've created a HTML template and I'm going to start by creating a main tag. Next, I'm going to make a div tag. So with the div tag, I'm going to give it an ID. I'm going to call this ID a gradient background. So you saw that gradient background I was at the back earlier on. So that's what I'm putting, the gradient background. Ground. Okay, next I'm going to create another div. And then this div is going to be like what's going to hold the entire application. So I'm going to give this an ID and I'm going to call this app container. Yeah. Then I'm going to create two sections. So the first section is going to house the to the text to do completed the the input for adding and the button for adding. Then the other section is going to uh, contain like the two different um, the completed side and the non completed side. Yeah. Okay. So I'm going to say section. I'm going to give this section and call it. I'm give it. I'll give it an ID and I'll call this ID. I'll say creation area, creation, the creation area. Then inside this, I'm going to have a div, and this div is going to be to do summary. Go to do summary. Then in it, we're going to have a H2. And I'm going to say that for this H2, I'm going to give it an ID and I'm going to call it um, completed track. So it's supposed to be tracker, but I don't have the strength to call it tracker. So I'm just call it completed track. Then in this, I'm going to put a span. Yeah, yeah. Oops, a span. This span is going to have an ID and I'm going to say comp or completed to do's dash length. So we're going to put, let's say one here and I'm going to put like a slash here. Then we're going to have another span 
this span is going to have an ID. And we're going to call this ID to do's dash length. So the to do's length essentially. Then we're going to have another H2. And this H2, we're going to call it to do completed. So this is for the, you know, you could be. So this is the summary side. So under it, I'm going to have another div. I'm going to call this the, we're going to give it an ID. I'm going to call it adding area. Then, We are going to put an input. I'm going to give this input an ID. I just call it add in input. Then we're going to have a placeholder and we're going to say new to do. And under it, we're going to put a button. And we'll say add here. This button is going to have an ID. And we're going to say this is adding, adding dash btn. Save. Let's take a look at what that looks like so far. I'm going to refresh. So you can see one over, sorry, I just realized I skipped putting something here. So let's just see three. Then, so, so one over three to do completed, add to do add. So this is what it looks like so far. And we're going to create directly under the section. We're going to have another div. Oops, sorry. This div is going to be housing the two um, um, the two to dos that have been typed. So the completed area and the uncompleted area. So this is what is going to be housing each of them. To dos dash container. That's what we're going to, we're going to give it an ID called to dos dash container. And from there. We're going to create a section. This section, first section, is going to house the completed section. So it's going to be the complete, the uncompleted. So when you just type in the new to do, it goes to the uncompleted section first. So we're going to give this a class. And we're going to call this class uncompleted section. The reason why we're giving it a class is because we're going to add another class to it in future. So we're going to use like class list dot add. Yes, because it has a class that will be, uh, we'll be able to easily manipulate what we want to manipulate. So that's the whole idea. And directly below the, this section, we're going to have another section. I could just duplicate it and I'm going to call this, com just remove the on, the un, so it's going to be just completed section, yeah. So this is what we're going for. So let's style this and see what it will look like so far before um, working on other things such as the to do, the modal and other things. So yeah, let's just style this first, then we'll come back to it later. To style this, I'm going to be adding a CSS file to this. So I'm going to just say, yeah, sorry. So new file styles.css and here I'm going to say link 
href then this is going to be style shift here I'm just going to say body background color let's see if it's linked already okay so it's linked already let me remove this so to start with i'm going to be removing the margin pattern i'm going to remove the margin pattern and give it a box size and border box so box size and border box next i'm going to style the main so the main is going to be I'm going to give it a position relative because of this gradient here and then i'm going to say height 100 view height so 100 vh next i'm going to be styling the gradient this gradient so i'm just going to copy this i'll come here then put the pound sign then this and position absolute for this. The next I'm going to see height is thirty five percent, width one hundred percent. Top zero, left zero, background. I'm going to say linear gradient into right. And I'm going to say aqua. I want this, then I want the next phase to start 15%. So aqua 15% and blue. Then border radius. So zero. I don't want it. I don't want border there yeah, to be radius at the top. So. I'm going to say 0, 0, 30 pixels, 30 pixels, then Z index, minus 1. So for the border radius, there is no radius here. So it goes clockwise. So 0, 0, then 30, 30. Yeah, just to explain what I was doing there right okay next I'm going to style the app container to this so I'm going for this app container I'm going to create a variable um, you see the reason why I'm going to create the variable and because there are some things that I want to have the same measurement and I wouldn't want to type them twice. So this, we're going to say space. That's the variable I'm creating. So I'm just going to give it 30 pixels. And then I'm going to say width of 650 pixels. And then margin auto. Then height is 100%. And I want a padding at the top. Then I'm going to call that variable I just created. So variable dash space. So let's see what we have so far. So you can see that's brought it to the middle. All right. Next, I'm going to be styling the creation area to so this section. So copy the creation area and pound sign creation area. So height is 100 pixels, width is 100%. Margin bottom. So now I'm going to use the var also because I want the padding top and the margin bottom to be the same thing at all times. Then I'm going to see display flex. 
and flex direction column and then I want to justify the content space between So I want the so the margin I was referring to is here and here. I wanted it to be the same. So yeah, so next I'm going to be styling the to do summary. So um let's to do summary here, so here. So for this, I'm going to say display flex, justify content space around align items center. So save. Yeah. Um, after that, let me style the completed track. So I'm going to say height 55 pixels with 55 pixels to background color black color um let's say white and then display I want to make it flex also. So let's see what we have so far. Okay, yeah. And justify content center. Align items center. Then we're gonna give it a border radius five pixels. see so what i want is i want this instead of it being white i want it to be um see-through not yeah like transparent i want it to be uh, i want it to be see-through so that we would see the gradient color this gradient color at this so instead of white it would be the gradient color just at the back yeah and to achieve that we're going to use mix blend mode so mix blend mode and i'm going to choose multiply so if you refresh you can see that this is what we're going to get now we are going to style the adding area so let's just do that. Then so for the adding area, I'm going to give it a height of the two pixels. Then display flex. And then justify content space between. So yeah, so now it's here and here. Yeah. Then we will style the added input. Which is gonna be height 100 percent and width 88 percent. Padding, hmm. okay, for padding, we'll say zero pixels, top, bottom, and then 15 pixels, left, right. For border radius, we're going to say five pixels. Then for the border, we're going to say none.
Okay, so yeah, that looks good. Um, so now let's dial the button. So for this, we'll say display block. The reason why we're doing this is so that um, it will take the properties. If we don't give it display block, it, some of the properties would not be there when you give it like a padding height and all those things, and it would not look the way you want. So height 100%. Flex. So we're going to say 0.9. So we wanted to take like the remaining space. So instead of saying one, we wanted to take like 0.9 of the remaining space. Yeah. What a radius. Oops. What a radius five pixel. And then what that is none. Okay, so that's what we have so far. Nice. Um, mm -hmm. So let's dial this to do container, or to do's container. So we say display flex. Justify content space between height, let's say 78% with 100%. Yeah. Okay. Um, next, let's dial the uncompleted section. So, so this is where whenever the person finish uh when the person types the um to do this is where it would first pop up so we're going to style this and since it's the same height and width as the completed section sorry this is supposed to be a class let's also do that for the completed section so dot completed section so height 100 percent width 45 percent then we're going to give it a pattern 13 pixels and 10 pixels so 13 pixels top bottom 10 pixels left right then background color I'm going to say RGB, then we'll say 46, 46, 46. So it's not black, but it's dark enough. The radius, but our radius is going to be um, 10 pixels. So that looks good so far. Okay. That looks good so far. Um, so now we have a look, a good look of what we're working with. And yeah, looks, looks good so far. So now this is what we have so far. And let's bring in the to do what did to do and we'll see what happens after that so let's head back to our html right so in our html in the uncompleted section we are going to create a div and this div we're going to give it an id we'll call it single to do Right. 
and then we would say we'll create another div but this time we're going to call we're going to give it an id and call it completed Inside this completed box is where we're going to have the, <clears throat> excuse me, inside this completed box is where we're going to have the text. So let's just say walk the park. And then we'll create a button, the, the edit button. So we'll say button, we'll say edit. We'll give it an ID. I will say single edit. Let's duplicate this. Oops. And I'm going to give this delete. Yeah. Yes. And this will be single delete. So directly under this is where we're going to have the overlay over like when we decide to do when we move it to the completed area so now let's create that overlay so we're going to just put a div and then we'll say id is equals to completed then we'll say seal so it will be completed seal now, I'm going to put a button here for the delete so, so that when you move it to the completed area, you should be able to delete the, um, the to-do. So I'm just going to put a, another button here. I'm going to say delete. Now say ID is going to be sale, delete. Save. Hmm. Okay, let's see what that looks like. So, yeah, this is what it looks like so far. So, look, let's jump and let's just jump into CSS and style it and see what that would look like. So the first thing I want to do to this, um, what's it called? These boxes would be whenever we drag, when we hover over it, like, yeah, like when we drag into it, I want it to have a dark gray kind of color. And so what will happen is, so I'm going to see this completed section dot hovering so when it has a class of hovering which we're going to apply when we get to javascript then i want this property to be added so i want it to be background color then dark gray so you wouldn't be able to see this now but when we get to javascript you would understand what i'm talking about all right, then for the single to do, um, let's say position relative. The reason I'm saying position relative is this is going to be position absolute and I don't want it to escape this single to do. So that's why I'm giving it a position relative. So we say background. I'm going to give it RGB. So I'm going to say 142, 234, 234. Then margin bottom 15 pixels. Other radius five pixels. Right. 
50 pixel okay so that's what it looks like it has that aqua feel um so now let's um sorry okay so now let's style this completed box We're going to say height 100%, display flex, align item center, and padding, we'll say seven pixels up and down, seven pixels left, right, so just seven pixels all around. Okay, looks good. Then let's style the paragraph tag or the paragraph, yeah, par this paragraph element. So to do that, I'll just say completed box, direct child P, and we'll say flex one. I wanted to take all the space. Mm -hmm. Then I got to style the single edit and the single delete and then the seal delete. So that's going to be display block. Then height 30 pixels, add in. Top and bottom zero, 10 pixels left and right. Save. Okay, fantastic. So for the single edit, I'm just gonna say margin right, five pixels. So what I want to do is Whenever the um, completed seal, this, whenever the completed seal is inside the, okay, let's first style, okay, but let me explain what I'm trying. Whenever the completed seal is inside here, whenever it's here, I want it to be invisible. I want it to not show you. Then whenever it is, it's in the completed section. That's when I want it to show. Yeah. So So now for this single edit, I also don't want it to show. Like now it's here. When it gets here, I don't want it to show. So what I would do is that I would check for what class it's under. Yeah, so the edits button would show here, but once it gets here, it should disappear. So for, I'll say completed section, then this, then I'll say display none. Save. So it looks like nothing has really happened. However, let me let me copy the single to do and then place it here and you'll see what I'm talking about. So you can see here the edit button is showing, here the edit button isn't showing. So the reason is because there is this um, class here saying completed section. So once it sees that class, it is display none. All right, now let's style this um, completed seal. So we say position absolute top zero height, let's say 100%. Then width. 
100% background color RGBA 0, 0, 0, 0. 0.6 yeah and display none in the beginning it wouldn't show that is it wouldn't show when it's here all right so display none justify okay let's just say display none okay so if we do like this you can see it's disappeared all right so now when it, it gets to the completed section i want it to have a different set of property so um so we're going to see so i'm going to copy this i'm going to say display flex then justify content center and then align items center or instead of justify content center let's make it justify content flex end yeah that, that looks more like it that should be better let me see padding seven pixels seven pixels let's see what that looks like all right so yeah that's what it looks like under the completed section okay now we need to create a model so that whenever um, the edit button is clicked on it would pop up on the screen and then um, the person can type what they've edited so we're going to create a model so we would hop on html let's hop on into html back to html then we are going to create the model so just here i'm going to call this a section we're going to make a section and then we're going to give it a class and then we're going to say edit model and then we'll put an input inside and this input will have an id and we're going to just call it edit input all right so let's hop up let's hop back to css and style the edit model so we're going to say it yeah, edit model position oops position fixed top zero left zero height 100 percent width 100 percent background color i'm going to say rgba so let's use this since we've used it before then i'm going to say display flex justify content center align items center let's see what that looks like so far okay so now we have this modal over everything all right so next let's style um the input so we say width 50 percent height 40 pixels then we'll say padding zero pixels 15 pixels and then we we'll say border radius five pixel and then we we'll say border none <laughs> okay so that looks good so far so what we want to do is whenever the person finished when you type in what you want to type in i 
say, and you hit enter, this should disappear. How do we make it disappear? What we will do is we're going to add a class. So whenever there's a class closed here, yeah, so whenever we add closed, then it would disappear. So back here, we're going to say edit model and dot closed. So whenever the closed class is present, display none. Go back. Yeah. So we have pretty much covered the HTML and CSS. And let's, let's head into the JavaScript section and let's jump into it.